Shout out to Patrick Yates. Remember, if you have a cool idea for a video, let me know in the comments below. I might just give you a shout out. Ah, uh, Batman. I can tell you that this guy used to be my favorite superhero back when I was a kid. Then I saw the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, and then he just kind of got pushed back a little bit. So, but I, I honestly gotta say, Batman's at least in my top 20 favorite superheroes ever. So, that's something. Let's go over some of the requirements for this list. First off, I'm only doing the Batman live action movies. So there's only eight of those right now and BVS is included. So you'll see that on this list. But you must remember while watching this that although I am a fan of the DC films, I am more of a fan of the Marvel films. So when it comes down to it, um, DC is just pretty good to me. So yeah. All right, this one's gonna probably be a shocker to everyone, but starting out at number eight, I have Batman Forever. The reason why I have Batman Forever on instead of uh, Batman and Robin as number 8 is because I honestly don't really even remember uh, Batman and Forever. I, you know, I've seen every single Batman film too, don't, don't get me wrong, I've seen every single one, but I honestly can't even remember Batman Forever. You know, I, at least I remember Batman and Robin, there, there was some like memorable uh, moments, even though it was very corny and cheesy, um, there's memorable moments, so that's why. Batman Forever is number eight, and I can't really say anything more about it because it, it's for, it's just forgettable. Now at number seven, I have The Dark Knight. Just kidding, I better just scare the shit out of you guys right now. Actually, I have Batman and Robin. This movie is just utter crap. We already know that. You know, I would put this at number eight if I remember Batman Forever, but um, this one is just just so, such garbage. So so bad. You know, I understand the whole reason was when it was made, it was during the time where like people were making movie franchises just to sell toys, and that's what it was all about. So I gotta say that that's why Batman and Robin is just just terrible. Now I'll get down to the six remaining films. I just wanted to say that those other ones were the ones I didn't really care for. All the rest of these Batman films that you're gonna see, I do care for, but I I, uh, I have different opinions on them. Going to number six, I have the original Batman. The reason why the original Batman is on here is because although it was a great film, it wasn't um, as good as some of the, the, the newer ones we see. You know, it didn't hold my attention as well as some of the newer ones, especially its sequel. You know, it, it was a great start to what the Batman franchise could be. It really showed us how dark Batman can be and how, um, how, how raw Batman should be considering, you know, all we've seen before that was Adam West running around holding a bomb above his head. And you ever see those clips? They're so funny. But that is why Batman is number six on my list. Now, moving on to number five on my list, I have The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, the reason why I have actually The Dark Knight Rises over Batman is not because it is the superior film, but it holds my attention a little more. I would definitely say that Dark Knight Rises is probably the uh, downside out of all the Dark Knight trilogy, and I think everyone would agree with me on that. Now, um, there's something about it. It has a certain charm that makes me like it a little bit. You know, I, I honestly think that The Dark Knight Rises was a little bit um, lame compared to many of the other films before it, but there is a certain charm to it, like I said, and it does hold your attention, so that's why it is uh, number five on my list. At number four, we have Batman Begins. This film was kind of the uh, return to the role that we have seen back in the 1980s when uh, Batman was first first came out you know as time went on we kind of saw Batman become more kiddish again you know just to sell toys and then Batman Begins is what really brought Batman back and saved the character you know um, it is true you know you always hear the thing that like they say without the Batman Begins franchise we might not even see a Batman now in uh, like Batman vs Superman so you know it, it is it is a uh, pretty crazy to think that those cheesy cartoony Batmans almost destroyed the entire franchise. So it's a good thing Christopher Nolan got his hands on this franchise and really showed what Batman could and should have been from the very beginning. So that is why Batman Begins is number four on my list. Now at number three, we have Batman Returns. This one was so fun to me ever since I was a kid. You know, it was definitely the most gritty, the most dark out of the entire franchise so far. And um, I think that it really did serve a good purpose by showing us what exactly Batman can really do, as well as introducing one of the best Catwoman we've ever seen so far. And, you know, although the Penguin was very cartoonish in a sense, he also was very threatening and really weird looking and scary back when I was a kid. So I think he served his purpose correctly 
with being the villain of that film. And although the 1989 Batman really did uh, start that gloomy Batman phase, Batman Returns improved upon that story and just made the entire thing even better. And without that, we may not have the Dark Knight trilogy, so we gotta give it up for him. Now, I know I might get a little bit of flack for this, but at number two, I have Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. The reason why I understand that this is still not as much of a Batman film as it is the other ones, you know, this is more of him and a Superman film. When it comes down to it, Ben Affleck really did sell me at being this kind of older, more um, decrepit Batman. Should I use decrepit? He's not quite, he's not quite decrepit, but he's definitely seasoned. We'll use that word, he's seasoned. He kind of doesn't care anymore, you know what I mean? Like, when it comes down to Batman, there's always people who are like, uh, Batman doesn't kill. You realize that he has a moral compass. You know, he'll beat the shit out of you He'll beat you to the point of death, but he won't kill you because that's what he does And I'm thinking to myself like no, you know if you're a real hero you stop the villain if there's someone evil Specifically someone like the Joker someone you cannot fix someone that if you throw in jail It's just gonna break out anyways. You kill them. You get rid of them And I think that's perfect for what Batman would do, you know, especially when someone's trying to shoot you You know, like even if Batman is getting shot by somebody I want to kill that guy if I'm Batman and someone's trying to shoot me I want to kill you, you know, you're gonna die not me Fuck you. So yeah, I'm a big supporter of the Batman and Batman v Superman. You know, he doesn't take chances He kills whoever gets in his way and although people would say that that's not Batman's way I honestly think it's better than his old way if there was an old way, so that's just my personal opinion on that one. And that's why Batman v Superman is number two on my list. Now coming in at number one, you all knew what this one was going to be. It's the Dark Knight, of course. This is like the perfect Batman film, you know, it really reaches that action and darkness that really is Batman, you know what I mean? You know, Christian Bale's performance as Batman, I mean, I, I have to mention Heath Ledger's Joker, you know, that is like the Joker right now, you know what I mean? Like, it's so hard to think of someone actually topping it, and it looks like Jared Leto is going to give his best performance and really try for it, so I'm really hoping that he does pretty good, and so far it seems he seems pretty creepy, so he, he's kind of got that down. But I mean, this film had action, it had the darkness, it had the scariness, it had the feel. The best part about the Dark Knight trilogy is that it really made you feel like you were part of this franchise, you know, that you were part of this world, this creepy, corrupt world, because that's the world we live in, you know what I mean? Like, the world we live in is corrupt and it's evil, but it has a face of good, you know? And that's kind of how, like, Gotham in a sense is, you know what I mean? Like, it, it promotes itself as good, but deep down it's just dark and terrible. So this film's like in my top 10 favorite superhero films still, till this day. So I honestly gotta give it credit, and it is number one on my list. But how would you rank these Batman films? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my videos, and until next time, guys, see ya.